Under 10th renewal of the Civil War, and you can wine and dine and root for your fave, or you could be fully medicated. Whatever, ain't the rivalry great? Dating back to 1894, the Civil War is the name of the football game matching the University of Oregon and their intrastate enemies from Oregon State. It is the longest running college football rivalry on the West Coast and the only time you'll find a duck throwing down against a beaver. Since 1997, the home team has been the victor in these games. That bodes well for the beaver fans at Breezer Stadium today. But streaks always come to an end and the Ducks have a couple of streaks that they'd like to bring to a conclusion. It's the 110th edition of the Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State. We're well, welcome to the campus of Oregon State University. We are here in Corvallis, Oregon. It's rivalry weekend. What better game than this one? One of the oldest rivalries around, so grab your buck teeth or get your duck call and get on down here to Research Stadium or you can just curl up and watch Kyocera College Football Special Edition on this Friday, the Oregon Ducks and the hometown Oregon State Beavers. And hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know and love my partner, Petros Papadakis. And uh, <laughs> P, both these teams coming in here, seven up and four down. But it's interesting, they're a different kind of seven and four. Well, Oregon State is a hot team. They set themselves back with a loss versus UCLA, but they're still a hot team. They're coming off a win. The second half of the season has been good for them. And if they went out, they're a 10-win season. Oregon, they've been cold, devastating loss at home versus Arizona last week. But that bitter taste is out of their mouth because this is a huge rivalry and there's a lot of anger, a lot of vitriol, a lot of teeth in this rivalry. Well, you, we and I talked to Mike Bellotti, the Oregon coach, and he was telling us that Dennis Dixon maybe has just lost a little bit of edge of confidence, and to that end today, he's going to start Brady Leaf. Dennis Dixon is not going to start, but he is going to play because there's things that they can't live without that Dixon does. He runs around, but Leaf is getting his first start ever at Oregon, which is amazing if you think about it, because we all know and have seen him a whole bunch. He's a little more accurate than Dixon, and they expect him not to make as many mistakes, and that's what Dixon has been doing. You know, I've I always like guys who fly under the radar. Evanson Bernard's been under the radar his whole career here. He sure has, and he is a great Pac-10 running back. He does everything for this team. Somewhere during the midpoint of the season, he was accounting for about 75% of the Beavers' offense. He finds holes. He's a leader. He's angry. This is an angry rivalry, and he catches a football. Can't wait to watch him. I think he's totally healthy today. And I think that's a real bottom line. Whoever's going to be able to run the football might win this football game. Jonathan Stewart of Oregon is a little more heralded than Evanson Bernard, but you know what? He's at 68 yards combined in Oregon's last two games, and Bernard for the second year in a row is a thousand yard rusher. Will that make a difference in the outcome here today? Ask me that question in about three hours. We welcome you back to Reeser Stadium. We're here on the campus in Corvallis, Oregon. College football Saturday special edition, the 110th renewal of a great college football rivalry. The Oregon Ducks and the Oregon State Beavers. Mike Bellotti, he's now the dean of Pac-10 coaches. Never thought I'd hear myself say that. 12 years the head coach of the Oregon Ducks. He has been for a while, and you can't say enough about the job that he's done at Oregon. A year ago, the Ducks finished 10-1 and in the regular season and got snubbed, Barry, by the BCS. And they went to the Holiday Bowl and lost to Oklahoma. But it was a successful and proud season. This year, they're trying to survive and get a win here. It will change their seasons. Mike Riley in his uh, fifth year here as the Beavers head coach. But, of course, this is his second tenure as the head man here in Corvallis. And he really was the guy who got the program turned and headed in the right direction. Well, he's the guy that brought in the people that started that turn. And last year, there were some rumblings. And early this year, there were more rumblings about his job. Five and six in 2005 and a 41 to 14 clubbing earlier this year to Boise State in September. But Oregon State has fully recovered. This place exploded more than they did with that flyover. Exploded when they beat USC a few weeks back. And they can finish off their season in the Pac-10 at home with a great victory in the Civil War today. Yeah, Jeremiah Johnson will be one of the deep men for Oregon, along with Jonathan Stewart, to receive this kick of Cerna. And this game will be underway. Proud to the person on its feet. It's going to be important for Oregon trying to keep the crowd out of this game and do something offensively on its first possession. 
There's Cernus' kick. He drives this pretty good. Johnson's going to handle it about a yard deep and come out. To the 10. Gets the 15, trying to get outside, and will not do it. Great job that time defensively to just kind of hang on to Jonathan Stewart. By Daniel Drayton. Really good job by Drayton on special teams. Well, already you see the anger and the aggressiveness in this football game, and the crowd is the reason the home team has won the last nine years. The crowd overreacts to every little thing, and everybody gets going behind that. So Brady leaves the quarterback. He comes to the line with five wideouts on first down. Now they bring Stewart back and line him up in the tailback spot. They'll spread you out. Give this to Stewart on an inside handoff, and Stewart will pick up about two. Jeff Van Orso on the stop for Oregon State. Take a look at the Oregon offense brought to you by Kiyosara. Brady Leaf making his first career start out of Great Falls, Montana. And the backs and receivers, Jonathan Stewart, the key there. Jordan Kent, Weatherspoon gets a start. We'll tell you about him in a minute. Very effective offensive line. They're big, they're tough, and they're young. Second down, they gave him three, called it second and seven. And Leaf will go up for the first time. Throws will clear out underneath. Catch is made by Rosario. Ball's loose, picked up by Oregon State. And that's the first turnover of the ball game. And of course, what Oregon absolutely did not want to do was get the crowd even more involved than they are. But Brandon Hughes picked up the loose ball, and Oregon State has it deep in Oregon territory. And the ball went flying up in the air, and Hughes was able to get his hands on it. Let's see what happened. It's in a shotgun, just one step back for Brady Leaf. And that ball is knocked loose from Rosario. And Hughes did a great job of just getting his hands on it. That way there's no question as to whether or not the pass was incomplete because the ball never hit the ground. And I don't know how they'll rule that, but the bottom line is Oregon State has the ball. It's either a fumble and a recovery for Oregon State or an intercepted pass for Hughes. Big windfall for the Beavs. No question. So more under center. Play fake, he'll put it up on first down. Rolls out, buys time, throws, balls caught this time at the 10-yard line by Jackson. And a first down on the first step for the Beavers. Offensively for these Oregon State Beavers, here's the way they'll come to the dance. Matt Moore, of course, will be the quarterback. He is now a senior. He's thrown 117 passes, now 118 with no interceptions. We already talked about Evanson Bernard. Reuben Jackson just made that first catch. Sammy Strotter is a real go-to guy. The offensive line has been effective and I think is getting better, if anything. First down at the 11 yard line, so they can make a first down without scoring a touchdown. Moore straight back in trouble this time. Now he throws it away. Pass intended for Joe Newton, but Moore was under siege. Teotelli was coming hard that time for the Ducks. Here's the defensive line for Oregon State. The linebackers, Tuatelli, who just made that play, Patrick Chung, and Ajiman, who really plays more of a linebacker spot. Chung really more of a safety. It's an interchangeable defense. J.D. Nelson, the leader of the defense. There's the man who made that either pick or fumble recovery, however they ruled that. Second down and 10 now at the 11-yard line. Here comes a blitz. And Moore steps up, throws wide open this time, and into the end zone for the score is Vanderveer. Well executed, picked the blitz up. Vanderveer found himself wide open. And more of a disturbing trend going on here for the Oregon Ducks. They gave up 24 points on turnovers last week. Matt Moore had 19 picks himself last year. But you said he hasn't thrown a lot of picks recently. That was a beautiful pass, and he looks more in command of the offense than he ev ever has here with the Ducks. Absolutely. Extra point by Cerna is driven through, and just like that, the Ducks are, or the Beavers are on the board. They lead it 7 to nothing, just underway. 12-47 remaining first quarter. Is Matt Moore happy? You bet. Welcome back, Oregon State quickly on the board off the turnover. 
three plays, 25 yards, a bang bang series, and they lead it seven to nothing. And you see the smile on the face of Jason Vandiver. That's his second reception of the year. He just ran out for senior day and high fived his teammates and all the parents. A lot of excitement here for the Beavs early in the football game, and for Oregon, more of the same turnovers and points given up. Great way to start his last home game. Cerna will kick it away again to Johnson and Stewart. Cerna this time kind of a sidewinder that is going to go out of bounds. So Oregon going to get good field position at the 35 yard line. See if the Ducks can do anything about changing the momentum of this game. Give is to Stewart, not much. About three. It was Johnson, Jeremiah Johnson on the carry. Picked up about three to the 45 yard line. First carry of the day for Johnson. Now you think about it, Oregon has not been efficient on offense or really defense since that opening possession at USC. We were at that game, Barry, where they drove about 70 yards and they missed on fourth and one instead of kicking a field goal. Ever since then, this team has kind of been in a rut. And Mike Bellotti was talking about that. They can change in a moment. It's a talented football team, but they've just been a little bit out of sync. Here's Leaf over the middle and a nice grab by Rosario for a first out at the 45 yard line of Oregon State. Doggett and LaRoque are there, but well thrown ball and a good grab by Rosario, who's been a very effective third down receiver. Dante Rosario is a good player. He's a guy that came in as a fullback. They love to throw the ball to him over the middle because of his size. He's 6'4", 250. He uses his body very well. Very involved in the duck offense. First down at the 46-yard line. Leap gives this time on a keeper, rather, to the 40-yard line. He's got a first down down to the 35-yard line. Well, this guy's play looked like he gave it up to Johnson, but instead came right back on the keeper for a gain of 12. Joey LaRoque on the tackle. And behind Brady Leaf in his first start for Oregon, the offense is starting to show a little bit of rhythm. A lot of people think Brady Leaf is just a drop back guy and Dennis Dixon can run really well. Ducks trailing seven to nothing. Leaf going under center this time. That doesn't happen very often. Here's Johnson. Johnson reverses his field and tries to cut back and he's running a long way for not very much and now he gets the corner and spits the football up and it goes out flying out of bounds. Football went further than he did. Afalava just kind of reached in, knocked it away. It's all for naught, though. The bottom line of this whole thing is it's a gain of four yards. Yeah, very strange play. Oregon doesn't use a fullback a lot. That time they put Rosario in the backfield and asked him to lead a sweep. Johnson doesn't trust it that much and reverses his field all the way around. You get yelled in that for in running back meetings unless you're Reggie Bush. I mean, they don't like that stuff a whole lot when you reverse your field unless you're Marcus Allen or somebody like that. And Afalava doing a good job of knocking that ball loose. Looks like they might have gained some yardage with the fumble. Though. Second down and six. A gain of four after all of that. I don't think you can advance with that fumble and there's an errant pass thrown by Leaf and it's fortunate that nobody was there pacing there the intended receiver Leaf says my bad. And the rains uh, have begun to come here. No upset there. This game has been played in the rain probably as much as it hasn't over the 109 previous meetings. Maybe more. Third and six. Big play. Leaf give to Johnson. And, or rather, it is not Johnson. It is Stewart, and Stewart will get it down to about the three-yard line. Well, this was the kind of play we thought we were going to see from Oregon from the get-go. This is their horse, Jonathan Stewart, and you see how physical he is running through tackles. That's awful lava that missed him the first time and caught up with him the second time. Big physical run by a big physical back who's very fast in Jonathan Stewart. He can take over this game if they let him. Stewart has not had a lot of snaps, actually. Here's the spot this time. He's surrounded at the three-yard line. Savvy Piscatelli trying to grab the ball out of there. Well, 
So it'll be second now. Well, Barry, you've been talking about the talent of this Oregon team, and they do. They have a great amount of talent, and Gary Croton puts a lot of wrinkles into that shotgun. They can run a lot of different, very creative things, especially down here in the red zone, because that's where you have to get more creative with the spread offense. So Stewart remains the setback. The crowd really into this thing now. Out of the gun once more. Leaf rolling to his right. Looks to run. Now throws end zone. And a great grab by Kent, but they're going to say no. He shuffled the feet, did not get the foot down, and was not forced out. Jordan Kent making a very athletic play for the ball. Really stretched out for it. We talked about creativity, the play fake, then the roll, then the throw to the back of the end zone. And Kent did not have control of that ball coming down. You can see him bobbling it. All right, I accept it. Two very athletic players in the Pac-10 well, going after it right there. That was a great bat. So now, instead of a touchdown, it's third down, about two and a half to go. Here's Stewart. He's in. Touchdown. So Jonathan Stewart uses that big body to jam it in for an Oregon score. And pending the extra point, this game should be tied. And, you know, instead of floating the ball up in the air on second down and one, why not just do that on second down when you have a big, strong, powerful back like Jonathan Stewart that can lean his way into the end zone with some serious explosion? Why not just give it to him and make a statement on the road? Now the try for point. And it's Paul Martinez who is the place kicker, effective place kicker for the Oregon Ducks. Out of the whole leap, he drives it through, and we're tied. So with two minutes, 19 seconds to go here in the first period, both teams have scored. Both teams have scored off of the other's turnover. Tied at seven, and now Sammy Strada will wait to receive this kick. Oh, it's going to be Coy Francis and Gerard Lawson, I beg your pardon. And this is going to be Frank, uh, Lawson. And Lawson's got room at the 30, 35 necktie as he crossed the 35-yard line of the 37. <laughs> First down at the 48. Moore rolls out, going to put it up again. Throws caught by Jackson. Jackson bumped out of bounds into Oregon territory at about the 37-yard line. Jarius Bird on the tackle. That'll be the last play of the first quarter and an action-packed first quarter. Look at the scoreboard. Shows Oregon 7 and the hometown Oregon State Beavers 7. Plenty of football left from here in Corvallis. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back. The Civil War. Back at Research State in the 110th Civil War, there is rain falling all day long. This is the way they're keeping the balls dry. When they come off the field, this guy keeps it underneath the towel, keeps it dry until it goes back into the game. They're rotating six balls in and out of the game. Once it leaves here and it's put back in play, the umpire holds the ball with a towel over it until they break the huddle. Hey, guys, I checked the forecast. They're expecting rain for 40 days and 40 nights, but the good news out of the Doppler, only 20% chance of locusts. And we've just started building the arc up here, too. <laughs> Here's an inside hand off to Jackson with plenty of room at the 30 25. A first down at the 22 yard line. Jarris Bird makes the tackle. Riley doing a great job of mixing it up right now offensively. You know, it's very complicated the way they get the balls in and out of a football game, and I could never figure it out in high school. That's why I was reduced to being a water boy, which is easier. Because <laughs> at timeout, you just run out there for timeout. This system works a lot better, though. Last year, remember, they had Waddy blowing on him. <laughs> <laughs> he could barely breathe after I know. It's a tough game for him. So right. now third down and 15. Three for three on third downs, but not this time. Oregon just wraps up Matt Moore. J.D. Nelson on a safety blitz. J.D. Nelson doing a great job flying off the edge. 
Matt Moore with the play fake didn't have any time whatsoever even to look upfield because Nelson was on top of him beating the block of Joe Newton who's actually done a lot better job blocking this year for Oregon State but that time getting beat by a faster more athletic man in Nelson 49 yard field goal attempt for Alexis Cerna he has plenty of leg he's made him from 58 and it is on its way and it looks pretty good and it is pretty good. 49 yard field goal by Cerna, and that will give the Oregon State Beavers the lead with 12 minutes, 59 seconds remaining to be played here in the first half. 10 7, Beavs. Cerna drives this one, and this is going to be Johnson at the, about the 10 yard line. Now trying to get the outside. He might be able to do this at the 20, running laterally, and now he is run down and stopped as he crosses the 25 the 26 yard line Gerald Lawson makes the stop on it. Now Buckeye is a flower it's right? a flower of course it a is. Hawkeye is it's actually the eye it. it's the eye of the hawk that may be true is it not there go the name Hawkeye there you go. Orb the orb right the Raptor orb. <laughs> That'd be kind of a bulky nickname, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Stewart picks up a yard on first down. And Victor Butler makes sure he doesn't go any further than that. Very similar play was made on the Oregon defensive line in the last series. Victor Butler just coming across and doing a great job of wrapping up a very strong back. And Jonathan Stewart, they have got to get Stewart going. I mean, this is a guy that is mean and can play hard, but he needs rhythm. He needs carries. Second down and nine. Leaf all the way at quarterback. Now he throws, picked off. Picked off by Doggett. Doggett at the 10, at the 5. Touchdown, Beavers. Obviously never saw it. It doesn't seem to matter right now who's playing quarterback for Oregon. We've yet to see Dixon in this game. We might see him in the next series. Brady Leaf. This an interception. These guys have been turning the ball over for the last few weeks, trying to get the ball to Rosario, but Doggett jumps right in front. This is his third pick of the year. And these linebackers throughout the season have gotten better and better each week for Oregon State. That right there, you gotta think, the biggest play in the career of Sam linebacker Derek Doggett's career. No question about it. This was a, a cause of concern the linebacking core of the Oregon State Beavers when this season began. And as you said, they've matured. And right now, it's a pretty good unit. And in fact, the Oregon State Beavers, pretty darn good team. They lead it by 10, 17 to 7, 11 43 remaining here in the first half. Well, there's the man of the moment, Derek Doggett. As he gets a pick, takes it to the house, and his team now leads it 17 to 7. And there's a look at Dennis Dixon, who is uh, sort of in that me, me, me mode. And uh, it could, in fact, be him. We'll see. Got the helmet on now, which he did a moment ago. So Cerner to kick it away, drives this one. And this is going to be Crenshaw at the five yard line. Crenshaw behind a wall of blockers, stays on his feet to the 30, kind of hiding behind people, take it out to the 35 yard line. First down at the 27 yard line. This is Johnson, and Johnson will cut back, will pick up about three, maybe four yards on the play. Alan Darlin, the middle backer, comes up with the stop. And that's one of the very few negative things about taking a punt back to the house or taking an interception back to the house is, and you know, you don't think about it very much if you're not a football player, but that defense is right back out on the football field. And these guys are humans. It's not a video game. They need rest. And these guys have not had any rest. And you can see the Beaver defense huffing and puffing, and Oregon's doing a good job of really chipping away. Second down and six now. Pick up a four on first down by Johnson. And I think when somebody jumped, I think it was Rosario who jumped. And so this is going to cost the Ducks five yards. Dead ball, false start, number 44 of the offense. Five yard penalty, remain second down. So instead of a second and six, it's now going to be second 11. And Rosario just getting a little too much lean there. And when you have to use your left hand to balance yourself on the line of scrimmage, you're going to draw the flag.
This time in motion comes Colvin, and the give is to Johnson. All right, the play fake, and Colvin on the pitch, and Colvin is going to get it to about the 20-yard line. So they fake to Johnson, pitch to Colvin, who came in motion, lining up in the backfield, and Doggett makes the tackle, but a pretty good pickup. Brady Leaf looking pretty comfortable right now, running the spread offense, doing a good job with the fake. You know, that is not an easy pitch to make. Sometimes because of the speed of the game in college, it seems like an easier pitch for a high school kid to make. Coleman doing a good job of just getting his hands on the ball. Pickup of six, now it's third down and four. Leaf this time, give it to Johnson, and Johnson then did much. Might have lost the football in there. No, he hung on to it. But now it's going to be fourth down and about a yard and a half. And that's going to bring on the field goal team, Paul Martinez. who will try to put three more on the board for Oregon to make it a 17 to 10 game. It's going to be about a 36 yard effort. Martinez, very effective field goal kicker. So Martinez try to make it a 17 to 10 game. And I don't know. It's wide, no good. So Oregon State dodges a big bullet with 437 remaining in the first half. And the score remains the Oregon State Beavers 17 and Oregon 7. Bernard this time with no gain on the play. J.D. Nelson makes the stop. Pickup of might have gotten a yard. We're at Reeser Stadium here in Corvallis, Oregon, the 110th renewal of the Civil War, one of college football's great rivalries. Oregon and Oregon State, and the Beavs lead, lead it 17 to 7 with the clock ticking down here in the first half. A minute and 10 seconds, and the Beavers still have two timeouts remaining. And it's raining hard. And Moore goes under center once more. Straight back he goes. Look out. And a give this time. To Stoddard. To uh, Stoddard gets it ahead. Uh, and a timeout is called now. And let's take you back to our uh, trivia question. The Aflac trivia question of the day. These two teams played a scoreless tie back in 1983. Only one other interstate rivalry game finished in a scoreless tie since 1940. What was it? Who would know this? The Duck. September 26, 1942. I remember it was a rainy Saturday. <laughs> and <laughs> Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Playing to a scoreless tie. I was tired that day. You know, the 25th, I went out that night. And yeah, I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> was it on? <laughs> Big play right here. Moore throws over the middle, threw it a little behind the antenna receiver that time, who was Johnson. And now will be fourth down. And this is a very long field goal for Cerner should they decide to try it. But Cerner definitely has the leg four. It's going to be a 50 yarder. And we told you earlier, he's made a 58 yarder. He's made a 49 yarder in this game. And in a rainy game like this, that the offense is slowed down in, teams are going to be playing field position and using their running backs. Cerner is such a great weapon because he can hit this. No, no question about it. He's got a very strong leg, a very accurate kicker. So here we go, 50-yard try. And he got into this one pretty good, too. Has he got enough on it? Yes! Ooh, good from 50. How about this guy? You know, he's not a very big guy, either. Not at all. He looks like a team manager. Well, he's put six of the 20 points, in fact, seven of the 20 points that the Beavers have made on the board. And they lead it 20 to 7, a 49 yarder and a 50 yarder for Alexis Cerna. And there's a reason he won the Groza Award last year. 
And, you know, a lot of kickers are shunned by their teammates just because they're dorky and they're kickers. And they don't <laughs> practice and they don't bleed like the rest of the guys. But when you got a guy like Cerna that goes out there and does stuff like that for you, you know, hits a big field goal like that when the offense sputters and you're not really that far into the other team's territory, I mean, it just does wonders for your team. Put points on the board, gives you confidence, makes you feel good about the drive. But now Oregon State's defense is going to be out on the field. They've got a pretty good rest and only 33 seconds left. But Oregon's got to have something in the bag for them, maybe trying to stretch the field here. Well, you know, and it's interesting with Alexis Cerna. Kickers usually are very fragile kinds of guys. I don't mean physically, but mentally. And uh, remember his very first game at LSU, he misses three extra points, and it wound up costing his team the game. And you thought, you would have thought, you know, that was the end of the world for Alexis Cerna. Never going to see him again. Yeah, and he never missed after that. <laughs> I mean, period. He hasn't, he hasn't missed an extra point in, I think, 55 now. And... Uh, and is one of the most effective field goal kickers in the country, as witnessed the fact that he won the Lou Groza Award. I remember seeing that play and, and watching the highlights of that game at LSU, which really hurt the Beavers' whole season last year, and saying, you know, they'll never see this guy again. I'll never see him again. Well, Crenshaw's going to come out of here. Stewart, rather, really, is going to come out. And Stewart is going to get some room, and look out, Stewart at the 40, Stewart in midfield. Stewart to the 40-yard line of the Oregon State Beavers. What a huge run. Gerard Lawson with a saving tackle. Well, doesn't, doesn't that change things? <laughs> Talking about Cerna, and he actually had a beat on Jonathan Stewart, who weighs almost 240 pounds and is one of the fastest players on the Oregon team. Just gets through the hole very well. The wedge was well blocked. There's Cerna. <laughs> no chance there. And Lawson making the touchdown saving tackle. Stewart averaging about 26.6 yards per kickoff return. That was a great kickoff return. It puts his team in a great position here at the very end of the first half, 17 seconds left. Absolutely, 68 yards on the return by Stewart. And Oregon has called a timeout. They will still have two timeouts remaining, 17 seconds. So the Ducks, on the short end of a 20 to seven count at the half, Mike Riley's team came out ready to play, scored following a turnover and then a defensive touchdown. Jim Watson right now is with Mike Riley. Waddy? I don't think any out of Corvallis knows how good this Oregon State defense is. Your second best in the Pac-10, a good first half. Yeah, it, it was, uh, we're playing hard. They're hard to stop. They've got so many weapons. And we're, it's, uh, we gotta just come out in the second half and play better. That's what our goal is gonna be, but it's, uh, it's hard. They are very talented and very explosive. Mike, I don't think I've ever asked a coach at halftime about his kicker, but Alexis Cerna has been money again in bad weather. Yeah, you know, he is, uh, he's done this a lot for the Beavers, and, and uh, it, you know, we just got to keep, it's a long game. It's, we got to keep going the second Thanks, half. Thanks, Coach. Get out of the rain. Mike Riley, of course, in the Beavers' second best. You know, this is the last time that they're going to play in weather. After this, they finish their season in Hawaii, and if everything goes well, it's on to El Paso and the Sun Bowl. We'll come back. We welcome you back to the 110th renewal of the Civil War. Oregon and Oregon State, 20 to seven ball game at the half. Oregon State over Oregon. And Petros, what really strikes me here is that other than on the scoreboard, this is an even game. It is an even game, but Oregon has been doing to themselves what they have been doing this whole second half of the season. That is turning the ball over. One of the great questions of my life answered though during halftime, do fireworks work in the rain? The answer? <laughs> Sort of. Well, there <laughs> but there's been <laughs> fireworks on the field. Oregon State definitely looking good. Oregon, they put together some good drives, but they have not been able to convert. The two missed field goals, really devastating. They're really trying to regroup in, in the locker room at halftime because there's going to have to be some serious talking to by Mike Belize. Yeah, two missed field goals, two turnovers, and that's the difference in the game right now. First turnover was right here. Rosario fumbling the ball. Hughes picks it up, and Moore quickly converts. Yeah, they got the ball to Jason Vandiver. Fine touchdown by a senior tight end that doesn't get the ball a lot. And Oregon started to move the ball very well. Jonathan Stewart taking it in for the touchdown. He's doing a great job. That's a guy that can really take over this game if the game doesn't get too far away from the Ducks. This is not going to help. That's an interception by Brady Leaf. Doggett taking it back to the house. A great play by him. And then the missed field goal start for the Ducks. If they had both those field goals, the game would be a lot more manageable. They could be a lot more positive in the locker room at halftime. Alexis Cerna, though, has been the star hitting two big field goals for the Beavers. It's going to be a wild second half. I think so, too. 49-yarder and a 50-yarder. 
starter for Cerner. When you look at the numbers, uh, there's just a difference in uh, of one yard in total yardage. So, uh, and the time of possession is just about the same. 14 points of turnovers for Oregon State, and of course the Oregon touchdown, also the result of a turnover. The kicker, the big star of the game so far. You gotta <laughs> like that. Second half of football upcoming. Oregon's gotta fix some stuff. Oregon State just has to be doing what it does. We're coming back. 20 to 7 ball game as we prepare to start the second half. Barry Tompkins, Petros Papadakis, and Jimmy Watson. Dennis Dixon loosening up. So, will he be the quarterback of choice in the second half? Let's go down to Jim Watson right now. Get an update. Waddy? Yeah, Barry, Mike Bellotti, of course, a little bit frustrated, but actually pretty optimistic. I stepped into the Oregon locker room. I'll tell you about that in a second. Here's what he told me. He said, obviously, we got to finish drives and we got to convert some field goals. A couple of bad breaks right there. He did point out that their tur two turnovers have led to two Beaver touchdowns. Stop that. They're back in the game. Change momentum is what he told his offense. Defensively, he said they weren't good early, but they made adjustments, and they were pretty good down the stretch. The last 90 seconds of his talk, he let me step into the locker room, and I felt like Petros. He got me all geeked up. He said, we got to be greedy. Takeaways, not giveaways. Christmas is next month. My head was banging. I felt like pee. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get that pumped up? I'm, I'm sure that rain will cool you right down. <laughs> this one is going to be handled in the end zone by Coy Francis, and Francis is really nailed as he crossed the 20 yard line, about the 24 yard line. And that's where the Beavers will start things, leading by 13, 20 to 7. Turnovers really have been the story of this football game, though, so far. And we'll see if Mike Bellotti's guys can actually do what the coach suggests, and that is get some takeaways. Oregon State offense did slow down, or maybe it was the adjustments that Oregon made defensively. First down at the 24-yard line to start the second half. Matt Moore going to go up right now, steps up, throws, throws deep and in front of the intended receiver, Sammy Strutter. Moore had plenty of time that time, just couldn't get the ball where he wanted it to go. So now the punt, Kyle Loomis hits this one, hits it pretty good. This is going to be Chung at about the 31 yard line, nailed immediately after making that catch. The ball popped loose, but I think they're going to say he was already down. Oregon will maintain possession. It was Shane Cavanaugh down under that punt to make the stop. 20 to seven, we'll be back. So the Ducks start just across the 30 yard line at the 31, their first possession of the second half and it is still Brady Leaf at quarterback. And a give this time is to Stewart. And Stewart spins by one man, gets across the 35 to the 36, gonna be a pickup of about five. Now before that run, Oregon just 65 yards rushing in the game. Oregon State only 43. Stewart with a very good run, being patient, getting behind his blockers. He's got the tight end, Rosario, leading him downfield. Afalava making the tackle. But I feel misled by these coaches. They told me knock down, drag out, smash mouth, running the football. Not happening. False propaganda. Second down now and four. They gave six to Stewart on first down. And now Leaf going to throw. Airs it out for Jordan Kenny. He was out of bounds. He makes the catch. But he was out of bounds, and I don't see, yeah, now an official is going to say, yes, he was. He went out and then came back in, and I think this is going to come back. Now, usually when a receiver goes out of bounds, you see a hat come off of the official, but there are no hats on the field. Great catch. Well, unless they're going to say he was pushed out of bounds, but he definitely was out of bounds. No question about it. So a first down at the 31-yard line. And here is Stewart, and he breaks it and gets into the secondary and will be very close to a first down at the 21-yard line. All I can say is I hope that's not a play that goes any distance in deciding this football game. Well, there could always be something that we don't understand. But in this case, well, pretty tough. I mean, he was clearly out of bounds. Kent was clearly out of bounds, came back and made the count. You can make the case that he was pushed out of bounds, but he was pushed out of bounds, then it's either interference or holding. Give to Stewart again. Stewart running right. Stewart at the 20, Stewart to the 10, Stewart to the goal line. The 
score is not too far off for Stewart to try to take over this football game. Inside handoff, maybe even a power play, but Stewart taking it wide. Good block by Rosario, and he is untouched, getting into the end zone. Now, this is an up-and-down north-south runner, but you see the speed. I mean, he's got an incredible amount of speed, and he can turn it on pretty fast. He accelerates very quickly. This is a really good running back. Yeah, no question about it. Great balance, great strength. Try for point by Martinez is up and good, and Ooh. suddenly it's a six-point football game. Oregon State 20 and Oregon 14, 11-41 remaining here in the third quarter. Don't go anywhere. This game still to be played out. 20 to 14 now after that touchdown on a 69-yard drive by the Ducks in just a minute and 23 seconds. 37 yards of that drive taken care of by Jonathan Stewart. Here is Evenson's kick. It's a short kick. Francis going to handle this at the one-yard line. Comes back to the 10 and is tripped up as he crossed the 15-yard line. Good play again on special teams by Jameel Dowling that time. Here's the touchdown. Stewart just finding his way into the end zone and turning on some speed. If Oregon State goes three and out here, Oregon has seized momentum. And how about this play? Great play by the Oregon defense on first down. Forcing Bernard back about two or three yards. Darius Sanders, Nick Reed, two defensive ends there on the stop. They met in the middle. Yeah, and Coach really putting it on Nick Reed and not being able to block him at all. Reed in the backfield in a hurry. Sanders as well. That really kills your momentum if you're Oregon State. You Got to get something going. Go downfield with more. Bernard again. Bernard right up the gut this time. Gets a lot of it back to about the 24-yard line. Picked up about nine, and it's going to be third down and two. Kyle Devan, the center, who has been a horse up front for the Beavers, cleared the way that time. Evanson Bernard looked like he was getting his hair pulled a little in the first half. You see, he's tied up his hair. In a rivalry game, you know, you got to take those kind of precautions. No question. I always tie mine up whenever I. <laughs> I like your hair back. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. And a little off my forehead. <laughs> All kinds of movement up front that time. Prior to the snap, defense. Offside. That's going to cost the Beavers five yards. That's a big yard five yards. Takes it from third and short. Yard penalty to a third and seven. And now they're going to say it's going the other way. But now Oregon State getting a first down out of that. And after the play on first down with Bernard losing yardage, that's pretty big. First down at the 29 yard line. Moore will go up this time off the play fake. Now he steps up, throws, and a comebacker, and the catch is made by Strotter. That'll be another Beavers first down. Walter Thurman defending for Oregon. And Oregon State needed this in this drive. Matt Moore, a prototypical strong-armed, cannon-armed Beaver quarterback. They've had a lot of them. He wants to get Strotter involved in the football game. They can eat up big chunks of yardage behind the arm of Matt Moore. He's making great decisions in this football game. There's another good one. First down at the 43-yard line. There's the numbers on Moore. The Ducks show blitz here. And they come with a blitz. And Moore airs it out. He's got a man. It's Jackson. And Jackson makes the catch at 20. It's a foot race. He's dropped at the 7-yard line. Thurman defending and made a saving tackle, but a perfectly thrown ball by Moore. Jackson took it right in stride. Oregon middle linebacker Blair Phillips is out, not going to return. He has a knee injury. The Ducks still come with the blitz. That leaves one-on-one -on -one coverage. Levitri with some great blitz pickup and a great throw by Matt Moore. 
getting the ball to Ruben Jackson, and you see his reaction. He's really feeling it. I've seen this kid a lot, and he is very confident this afternoon in the Civil War. Well, as we said, he hasn't hasn't thrown an intercepted pass now in 130 passes, I believe it is. In fact, it's more than that. I think it's 134 passes now. Moore again, going to put it up. Look to the end zone. Now he's got to run. At the 10, at the 5, slides down. Wise choice. Tuatelli was lurking. The Beavs lining up that time with a true fullback, and they don't often do that. Micah Strickland. And they tried to run kind of a Bronco play. Moore completely taken it the opposite direction. Wasn't supposed to go that way, but gets a positive gain out of it. And again, playing with a lot of confidence. And the Beavs, like you said earlier, Barry, throwing a lot of different looks even here in the third quarter. Second down now and goal. And here's Bernard, and he's in. Touchdown, Beavers. And a late flag. And that's just for some roofing that's going on. I'm not sure who that late flag is, late, late call is going to be on. After the play, personal foul, number 62 on the offense. It's going to be against Oregon State. That means it's going to put the ball into the hands of Jonathan Stewart on a kickoff, most likely, because they'll have to kick 15 yards further back. Jeremy Perry was the guilty party. And that's a tough call on an offensive lineman because you always teach him to finish plays. And I think that's what Perry was doing in that situation, seeing Bernard creep into the end zone. I mean, you think about all these other great running backs in recent history at Oregon State. Of course, Ken Simonton, Steven Jackson, very dominant backs. And, and Bernard kind of looks like those guys. I mean, he, he, he's sort of a hybrid between the two, a little bit bigger than Simonton, a little bit faster than Jackson. Considerably smaller than Jackson. Yeah, Steven Jackson, definitely. He's a horse. One of the great running backs to come out of the Pac-10 in the last decade. Yeah. So Cerna will come on to try to add the 27th point for the Beavers, but psychologically a very good answer to Oregon's drive. Try for point is driven through yet another time by Cerna. And it's a 27 to 14 ball game. Oregon State over Oregon. 7:52 remaining. Third quarter. We're coming back. Evanson Bernard takes that last one in for Oregon State. Cerna with the conversion, and the Beavers lead at 27 to 14. They'll have to kick from the 20-yard line here to Stewart and Crenshaw, who will come all the way up to around the 15 or 16 yard line to receive this. Remember, Stewart went 68 yards with a kick return right before the end of the first half. I get a good idea of Cerna's leg right here. And he drives this one, and this is going to be Stewart at about the 25 yard line. He's going to run laterally get it back to about the 37 yard line where he is stopped by Isaiah Cook. There's Lawson getting something done. Yeah. It's kind of wet for that isn't it? That's a taxidermist. <laughs> Good to Stewart. Nothing to do it. Stewart grabbed just as he got started that time by Ben Siegert. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. So the third quarter comes to an end. Each team putting a touchdown on the board. To look at the scoreboard as we move on to the fourth and final period is Oregon State 27 and Oregon 14 in the 110th renewal of the Civil War. 27 to 14, Oregon State over Oregon. The only place it's at all lopsided is on the scoreboard because when you look at total yardage, it's Remember at the first half there was one yard difference. Now look at the third quarter stats. One yard difference, and Oregon has got the advantage. 267 to 266. And just about the same time of possession, Oregon State has got the advantage there. Second down and eight now for Oregon as we start the final period. Play fake, Leaf in trouble. Gets hit and rolls away from it. Now he's gonna run. 45 and really cracked at the 48-yard line. That was ugly in every possible way if you're Brady Leaf. 
Jeff Van Orso just made him pay. Jeff Van Orso doing a great job of getting over there and putting a big hit on the Oregon quarterback. Now, Brady Leaf is a big dude, and you're not going to be able to get him unless you wrap him up. But here's Van Orso leaving his feet and making a big play. Here it is in real speed. And, of course, Van Orso forever, whoo, forever enshrined in Corvallis and Oregon State lore by batting that two-point conversion down by John David Booty. Third down and four now, right at the 40-yard line. Could be two down territory. Leaf gonna throw. Airs it out deep. Got a man. And Kemp makes the catch and floats out of bounds at about the nine yard line. And what he did there was he took the route enough to the inside that he allowed Leaf to throw the ball to the outside where he had room to go get it. Well, Jordan Kent is a physical guy. And he's not gonna allow himself to be pushed out to the sideline to where even if he makes the catch, that ball is incomplete. Just doing a great job, Barry. You're exactly right against Keenan Lewis. And Leaf, with a good throw, sees that he has that room to the sideline. Kent could not catch a long pass like that over the shoulder last year. Had a very difficult time doing so. This year, he's a much more polished wide receiver. I think he's a guy that's going to play in the NFL. You're right. May not be an instant star, but he's going to play in the NFL. Here's Leaf straight back. Going to the end zone. Got a man. Couldn't get it to Stewart. Or Weatherspoon, I beg your pardon. Well, they had him. Weatherspoon coming all the way across the end zone. And Leaf just putting a little too much air under it. You know, it was really the run by Jonathan Stewart that kind of fueled Oregon starting to move the ball more significantly down the field. And then the nice throw on the catch by Jordan Kent. Let's see if they can convert here. If they don't, they're not going to win this game. Second down and 10. And they give it to Stewart, or rather the pitch to Colvin, and Colvin's going to get it down to about the three-yard line. Had me fooled. That's a that triple option that they run on occasion. Not a classic triple option. No, it's a weird, weird kind of triple option. It's not a wing tee, and it's not the wishbone, but it's a shotgun option with the inside handoff, and then Leaf taking the hit right away and tossing that ball out there. You know, you're prone to turn over the ball when it's in the air and changing hands that much, but Leaf doing a good job right there of managing that. Big third down. Huge play right here. Oregon has done well. 10 of 15 on third down conversions. Leaf is going to throw for it. Now he's in trouble. And now he's going to step up and he's going to run and he's going to be short of the first down. He'll be at about the two-yard line. He's going to need about a yard, maybe a little more than a yard for a first down and two yards for a touchdown. Certainly Oregon will go here. I think that was a great job by Brady Leaf. Not just throwing this ball into the end zone desperately or fumbling the football. Tucks it away, takes the hit, and falls forward knowing that he's going to have another chance because his team has got to get a touchdown here. And they will use Rosario basically in a fullback's position here. They need one for a first down, two for a touchdown. Leaf goes under center, give it to Stewart. Stewart's got both. Touchdown, Oregon. Don't go anywhere yet. He said that the Ducks had to wake up now if they were going to win this football game or have a chance to win this football game. And that's exactly what they did. Can't get Jonathan Stewart with an arm tackle. He does a good job of just sort of finding his way and protecting the football. Gets the first down first, and then the touchdown. 16 carries, 83 yards, but three touchdowns on the day for Jonathan Stewart. In my opinion, he hasn't been used enough. And the kick is blocked. It is blocked. remains 27 to 20 and that is the second PAT blocked that Oregon has had this year big play huge play seven point game welcome back 27 to 20 the blocked extra point they're giving the block to Ben Siegert but what I think really happened is Martinez just never got this ball up he kicked it right in the back of one of his own linemen see what you think yeah because you never see the ball go over the heads 
of the Oregon offensive line and Paul Martinez missing two field goals and now basically missing a PAT has fallen apart here in the Civil War. So Francis and Larson will await this kick. Six minutes left. It has rained virtually from the get-go, continually and uh, rather hard. Evenson will kick it away, and it's a high end of a run kick. And it's going to be Larson who's wrapped up like a Christmas goose. He gets it back to about the 20-yard line. He's <laughs> There's a little friendly argument going on. <laughs> this is a friendly one. Here. Not nearly as heated as some others, and that pass is incomplete. Hung in the air for a long time. Intended that time for Powers and knocked down by J.D. Nelson. Nelson, you know, not a big guy, but he plays big. Matt Moore, plenty of time. Oregon State still going for it in this football game, trying to get first downs, not just packing it in conservatively, trying to get the ball downfield. And maybe the ball was a little late. Maybe Powers didn't fight enough to get it. But now it's second and 10 and the clock is stopped. Not a great call. 5.38 remaining in the game. Beavs by seven. Here's Bernard straight ahead. Gets to about the 24-yard line. Pickup of about three, and it's going to be third and seven now. A great job by Oregon, and you got to wonder about Oregon State. Maybe they should have run the ball on first down there and kept that clock moving. What they need is a first down, and they need to run clock. And Moore will now send... Bernard to the near side, straight back goes Moore, and a clear off this time, incomplete, tended for Powers, and now it's going to be fourth down, the clock stopped at 454, and Oregon's going to get it back with a world of time. Well, you said it right there, Barry, the clock stopped twice there on that possession for Oregon State, and they get nothing out of it. And if you want, if you're going to have the clock stop, you want to have a pass complete on the sideline or something for a first down so you can keep possession of the ball. But that time, two incomplete passes, twice the clock stops. Really, really bad possession for the Beavs. Loomis to punt it away. Only a minute and six seconds on that last possession. Chung, the deep man for the Oregon Ducks. That was almost blocked, and they wouldn't even try to block. Here's Chung at the 30 yard line, right up the gut to the 40. And he's still on his feet at about the 43-yard line. Great field position for Oregon. And, of course, a world of time. So here we go at the 43-yard line. Leaf, the quarterback. Straight back to pass with time. Throws over the middle. Caught by Coleman and fumbled. Picked up this time by Piscatelli. He's or rather by uh, LaRock. LaRock at the 30 to the 20 to the 10. Touchdown, Oregon State. But the officials are saying, let's come back and talk about this. Almost certainly it will be reviewed. But right now they are going to call this back and take another look. And the question is, did he have possession? Well, there's no way it's going to be a touchdown for the Beavers because I believe the whistle was blowing. There was too much stoppage on the field in the middle of the field. There's the throw. Nice throw. Big hit, I believe, from Hughes and Piscatelli simultaneously. And that ball is out. LaRock picks it up and shows some pretty good speed for a guy with big shoulder pads. They're just going to say incomplete pass Oregon ball. Brady Leaf starting his first game as an Oregon quarterback. He's played a lot, but this is one of the biggest drives of his career. He's got to keep this offense composed. This is a loud place, especially since the other side of the stadium was built up last year. Backed up to the 38-yard line now. Trips left. Four-man rush. Leaf with time, steps up, throws, and threw a very dangerous pass that time. Brian Payton was right there, and he had more chance than the intended receiver, Rosario. Barry, Mike Riley asked the defense to win the football game, and right now they're looking pretty good. They're playing with it, a tremendous amount of energy, and they're making plays out there. Maybe they scored a touchdown. 
So now it's going to be third down and 15. Big play. Same offensive alignment. Trips left. Three receivers to the left side. Straight back loose. Throws. Caught by Williams. First down at the 43-yard line of the Oregon State Beavers. Got to give it up for the offensive line of Oregon, too. They are really getting it done. Not much pressure on Leaf. Great protection there, and that time against Francis, Williams showing a lot of strength, getting inside and using his hands very well. And right now, Brady Leaf can write his own Civil War legacy if he can tie this game up. Williams, five catches, 43 yards, bad back and all. First down at the 43. The give to Stewart. Stewart busted, still on his feet, bounces it outside. Look out now. And Stewart just took the wrong cut that time. If he went the other way, it might have been six. Takes it to the 32-yard line as it is, and a first down, a pickup of 10. Derek Doggett on the tackle for Oregon State. Well, that was a very disorienting physical run, and I think you're right. If he would have made a different cut right there, he could have still been running, but that time more worried about kind of switching the ball, runs over Brandon Hughes and stays up. But not going the right direction. Still a first down run for Jonathan Stewart. Now they can get the ball. They got plenty of time. Plenty of time. 329, 28, clock ticking. Ball at the 32 yard line for the first down. This time Lee falls out. Now comes back on the screen to Johnson. Johnson at the 30 and is caught by the trailer that time as he gets out of bounds short of the 25 yard line. Good defensive play by Joey the Rock. Making the play from behind, or that play might have really gone. I'll tell you what, Brady Leaf looks very calm right now. Very calm, running the offense. Didn't panic on third down. The big throw to Williams right on the money. That time doing a good job under pressure from Seeger. Good first down yardage again. It's second down now, and about four. Leaf with time again, airs it out, going for Kent. Kent's got it, touchdown, Oregon! There was a lot of pushing going on. It was going both ways, though. And, you know, in a physical battle, Jordan Kent is probably going to win. Leaf knows all he has to do is put that ball up there and give his receiver a chance. Hughes not making any big play on the ball. Can't able to get that last split second separation to catch that ball. Brandon Hughes only 5'11. Jordan Kent, 6'5. And they are going to go for two points, I believe. Wow. They're not going to leave it on the foot of Martinez. This for the lead. Now, this is uh, something different. Obviously, Mike Pilati does not have any faith in his kicker right now. It is Leaf who takes it in. Wow. Now that, that uh, really shows something for, for a coach, I'll tell you that. I mean, obviously he had no faith in his kicker. And they run it in on the option as Leaf just takes it right in. And just like that, Oregon leads it 28 to 27. We're coming back. Twenty-eight to twenty-seven. Mike Bellotti deciding I'm going for two. I'm just not going to leave it in the hands of my kicker, who had missed two field goals and an extra point, and it worked out. And almost missed another PAT. Paul Martinez. We said he was falling apart. Obviously, Bellotti agrees. Does not let his kicker tie the football game and goes for it on a beautiful option play by Brady Leaf, who makes the right decision and knifes into the end zone. He can run pretty well. What a call. <laughs> Pretty gutsy call, I'll tell you that. It's one he could really be second-guessed on. On the road? Not going to be any, any return of this. Now, the clock is not a factor. Oregon State with plenty of time, and remember, they have a very strong leg and an accurate kicker. So now it falls on to the Beavers. 
Matt Moore straight back to pass. He steps up. He's got a man. He hits him. It's Strader. And Strader will have a first down across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Now look out, because Matt Moore is not afraid either. And he's playing at home. And like you mentioned, Alexis Serna is waiting on the sideline. And he is the best kicker maybe in the country. Last year he was. So this is going to be a great finish we're set up for. Plenty of time, 2.46. Oregon State has all its timeouts. Oregon, remember, used one early in the second half, so they have two. The numbers on Brady Leaf, 23 of 39, as you saw, for 258 yards. Matt Moore off the play, fake steps up, throws again, got a man, catches made, Strider at the 26. Matthew Harper makes the stop. Two big plays back to back by a big play guy, Sammy Strader. And Matt Moore slinging it down there without any fear whatsoever. Remember, he had the impressive drive at the end of the first half for a field goal. Strader on the post and just beautifully dropped in there by Moore and Strader very sure-handed. Now the clock is your ally. Now you want to probably run the ball here. You know you got a kicker. You're in his range right now. I'm not saying you don't want to advance the football. I'm not saying you don't want to score a touchdown, but I am saying you do want to use the clock. Nerve-wracking time for both teams. They give it to Bernard, and Bernard gets inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. That's going to be a pickup of about three. Jarris Bird on the stop for Oregon. The clock ticks down to two minutes. And with the way Brady Leaf looked on that last drive, Oregon State doesn't want to leave the Ducks too much time. No, it only took them a minute and 35 seconds. Most important thing right now is ball security. You have the kicker, you have confidence in him, you want ball security. You gotta hang on to that football if you're the beef. Give it to Bernard again, and Bernard hit right as he got to the line of scrimmage. And now, again, you start thinking, okay, if you stop him again here, as good a kicker as Alexis Cerna is, you're looking at a 41-yard field goal from here. So it's not a gimme. It's not a gimme field goal, but you have the confidence in your kicker. He's done it for you all year. He's the Groves Award winner. If you're going to put the game in the hands of a kicker, I wouldn't mind doing it with Alexis Cerna. Now, I feel the same way. As you saw, 97 consecutive points made, but that's not the issue here. And a timeout has been called by Oregon. So Oregon will have only one timeout remaining. 126 showing on the clock now. And what does Mike Riley do in this situation? Does he try to throw a screen? Does he try to get the ball to Newton or Vandiver, one of his tight ends? What does he do? Does he go for the first down, or does he just play it safe and run the football into the middle of the line of scrimmage? I, I think that's what you do. Tough I mean, call. As you said, he, he's got a lot of faith in Alexis Cerner. But, but again, this is not a chip shot. You're looking at a 41-yarder in the rain. There is no wind, however. That's one thing that is a factor. They could go left here and just try to put the ball in the middle of the field with Bernard. They need seven for a first down. They give it to Bernard. Bernard hit right as he crosses the line. He got to the 22. So now it's going to be a 39-yard field goal for Alexis Cerna. Oregon has one timeout to use, and they are going to use it right here. So with a minute and 18 seconds, Cerna will come on to try to put the Beavers ahead. Now, how about this scenario? <laughs> Should Cerna make the field goal and Oregon bring it back and get to, say, the 17 or 18 or 19 yard line, Martinez might wind up winning the game for you. <laughs> or lose it. Or yet. lose it. That's With right. the way he's been kicking today. And don't forget who's returning kickoffs for Oregon. I don't want to look too far ahead. This is a huge field goal from Cerna, but Jonathan Stewart's back there and he's already had a big kickoff return in this football game. But you've got to look at Cerna and just think this guy's ice cold. Well, he is, absolutely. But, of course, it's not just about Cerna. Right? You know, the kicking game. Snap, the hole, it's snap. wet. Exactly. He'll hit it right at the 30-yard line. It's a 40-yarder. He's already made a 49-yarder and a 50-yarder. This, to give his team the lead of the minute and 18 seconds for a minute to be played and the 110th renewal of the Civil War. 
and just kind of a typical Civil War. Here we go. Snap, place, kick, plenty on it, looks plenty good. It is. <laughs> Alexis Serna, smallest man, gets the biggest ride. But don't go anywhere yet. Now, Barry, before this place filled up, we were down on the field, and I saw Cerna jog out. And he's so small, and he had a beanie on it, he just looked like a little guy, you know? He's my size. Take it easy, will you? <laughs> he's smaller than you. Oh. But what a big-time football player Alexis Cerna is. And all these men that have been working so hard to win this football game and getting hit in the mouth and battling all season in the rivalry game, they put it on the shoulders of a guy that's not that big, but has got a huge leg and has done great things for this football team. And that's what they want to have their faith in. They want to have their faith in Alexis Cerner because he is coming through. 5'8", 162 pounds. Wow. Three field goals, 40, 49, and 50. And his team leads right now by two. Now, you're 5'11", aren't you? No, I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> So Cerna now will kick it away. Kick it to Stewart and Crenshaw. Stewart, remember, had a 68-yard return near the end of the first half. Cerna hits this short and high. Stewart at the 10, juggles it. Now he has to go back and pick it up. Got the first man to miss it. Now he's going to come back the other way. Look out. He's the 25 to 30, 35 to 40. He's in midfield and out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Gerard Lawson on the stop, but another huge return. And now it falls onto the Oregon Ducks. Offense in the Oregon State defense. Here's a look. Stewart leaving the ball behind him. And at least five Ducks with a chance to get him down, but he's too strong a runner. Switches the ball again. Lawson runs him down like he did the last time Stewart took one. If Oregon comes back and wins this football game, you've got to say it's the greatest Civil War ever. Oh, just a terrific, terrific game. It's already a good game. So Oregon starts the 43. 45 seconds left. Remember, the clock started ticking on the change of possession. Oregon has no timeouts remaining. Leaf throws, catch made. And they're going to have to hurry to get the line of scrimmage. It's at the 32 now, 32 seconds left. Jason Williams made that catch. They will hustle, will hustle to the line of scrimmage. Don't you know it's going to come down to Martinez? <laughs> what a wild game. Oh, I'm telling you. And Leaf has shown a great amount of poise, especially here in the fourth quarter, the last two possessions for the Ducks. Now the clock will start again. And Leaf will just throw it into the ground. So they burn a down with 31 seconds left. It does at least allow them to huddle up, call a play, get themselves organized. The ball's at the 31-yard line. Now, again, depending on the kicker, it's a 48-yarder from here. Not beyond the range of a lot of kickers. And Evenson may be the guy that would be called upon. He is normally the guy that does the kickoffs. That's just thinking ahead. Meantime, Leaf throws underneath. The catch is made by Johnson. He's headed to get out of bounds, and he does at the 27-yard line. So it may not even be Martinez should it come to that. 24 seconds remaining. And now it's a third down play, so they got to get a first down here before they can think about anything else. And it will be Evenson who will try it rather than Martinez. to the sideline and the catch is made and it does, it's not going to really matter because it's going to be fourth down they're going to have to kick the field goal right here with 20 seconds remaining and they will bring on Matt Evenson it's 
Let's go to Jim Watson quickly to the sideline. Waddy, quick. Hey, you know how kickers, everybody leaves him alone? Everybody was talking to Evenson before he went out. They all touched him on the head. And now the officials will run in. And I think Oregon State's going to call a timeout to try to freeze Evenson. Even since just a sophomore, I mean, he has got to be freaking out. <laughs> you would hope not. How could you not be freaking out? I mean, the whole state right now is on the edge of their seats. They're not even sitting down, they're standing. It's going to be 44 yards. And this will be even since third field goal attempt of the year. He has made one out of two. He has missed his only try outside of 40 yards. This ostensibly for the win. And he missed it. Hooked it to the left side. Never a chance. And Oregon State is going to win this football game. As the kicking game of Oregon just disintegrated in front of the eyes of Mike Bellotti. Conversely, Alexis Cerna goes out and just wins the game for his team. Whenever the Ducks have been great under Mike Bellotti, they've always had great special teams and a team that does not make mistakes in the special teams. They've always been able to convert kicks. That one didn't even really get up in the air. No, it had no chance right from the get-go. No drama, and Oregon State is going to win their eighth game of the year. It's not going to get easier for them. they got to go over to Hawaii and play a very tough Hawaii football team. They're 9-2 next week, but they can savor this one because they won the biggest game of their year, and I allow for the fact that they beat USC here. But when you win the Civil War, you've done something special. Well, it's the second time we've been here this year, Barry, with Waddy down on the sideline. It's the second time Waddy's got a deal with a huge melee and the students rushing the field. A lot of celebration at Reeser Stadium this year, and Corvallis is gonna be alive tonight. And you know who the toast of the town is? No question about Little it. Little Alexis Cerna. The littlest man on the field, Alexis Cerna as he makes three field goals, the shortest of which is a 40-yarder, the last of which gave his team the victory. Matt Moore played a great game. He was very consistent. He went downfield. He did not make mistakes. Mike Riley had a good plan going into the game, and Oregon showed great, great resilience coming back in the second half behind the arm of Brady Lee. Well, Oregon wins it. They gave the block of that kick to Seager. I'm not really sure the kick was even blocked, but Seager will get credit for a couple of blocks anyway. It's academic. Oregon State wins the game 30 to 28. It's a wrap for us, for my partners, Petros Papadakis and Jimmy Watson. I have three words for Wadi. Bring the car. So long, everybody. <laughs>